Cue the music. Let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, contributor for State of the U and OG member of the Orange Bowl Boys, and welcome to this Canesware-sponsored edition of Student of the Game. The orange and green good guys remain victorious. Three in a row, 33-30 to 30 winners over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And this pin and pull RPO, well, it's asserting its dominance and staple in this offense, and especially when you run it out of this double-stack formation, it put the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets defense in a bind. Two wide receivers stacked to the top. They combat it with two DBs over the top. Same thing here to the bottom of the screen. Two DBs. You have your free safety. So immediately you have five DBs. And now you have a loosened up box. I count five right here. A six kind of a free hitter. Now that pin and pull RPO again. You're going to pull your left tackle and left guard. They're coming across the formation. So watch this. And we got to go ahead and commend Ja'Kai Clark. Right? He had a zero-tech defensive tackle, but watch where his responsibility is going. He passes off that defensive tackle and is able to go ahead and get a nice block on that defensive end who was left unchecked when you pulled the left tackle, and now watch the rest of the blocks. Bang, bang, bang. Now, this is when Jalen Knighton does this team a service right here. At the point of attack, very good. Numbers on your side. It's still a one-on-one -on -one matchup between the rooster and a linebacker. This is why he changed your offense. Ready? Because something that could have potentially routinely been wrapped up, maybe for a five-yard gain, well, now that turns into about 15. On this first touchdown of the game, the University of Miami comes out in 11 set personnel, one running back, one tight end, and they're running a mirrored smash concept. Mirrored because this side of the field is running exactly what this side of the field is. And the smash concept, once again, is a corner route with an underlay Z out. Now, Tyler Van Dyke does a good job of knowing his guy, knowing his guy, and knowing what's open. Knowing his guy, that subtle shoulder warfare, especially in the goal line, is playing critical. Right here at the snap of the ball, look where his shoulders are directly square. It keeps this single high safety in the middle of the field with cement shoes, knowing the guy number two. In this situation, the way the University of Miami decided to block this blitz, they're going to go ahead and block this in. Jalen Knighton is filling here. He does a good job blocking the immediate threat to the quarterback, which was this stunt right here. This allows this defender to go unabated. So as a quarterback, there's sometimes when we don't have the numbers to block, I need to go ahead and get the ball out quick. That's knowing the guy number two. Now knowing what's open right here. When he's going ahead and throwing this ball, back is turned. Last week we talked about this, a back turn to the quarterback. To Tyler Van Dyke, that's open. Look at the throw. One-handed catch. You know what's coming. Bang. The University of Miami again in the first quarter in their 11-set personnel out of this double-stack formation. The concept, another mirrored one. Wide receivers on both sides of the field are doing similar concepts. The front driving wide receiver is going to hit a stop and find a soft spot in the zone, while the back wide receiver is going to run a nine route or vertical. You ask me, the protections have definitely improved over these subsequent weeks, and that is the case here once again, and working in unison with your running backs. When you have the right tackle decide to go ahead and kick out, that's Mr. Williams. Here's Jalen Knighton. He's going to go ahead and stole on this linebacker right there. Does enough. Now, pay attention to Tyler Van Dyke's vision. We've put this to bed. This further puts this to bed. He's initially looking topside. He's looking for a route, and then he's going to swing his head all the way back around. Now, pay attention when he's deciding to throw the ball and what he sees. Obviously, Xavier Restrepo, he's found a soft spot. He's going to sit right here. He's open. Back turned. Back turned. When you're even, you're leaving. So this was a good decision to throw the ball because right here, they got caught flat-footed. Xavier kind of put them in a bind by finding that soft spot. And you think, pay attention again to X. Yep, hands go up in the air and he just walks off the field. He knows what's about to happen. Bang! The University of Miami loses its gap integrity here and it leads to a big play. Georgia Tech is motioning with this jet sweep action across the formation, and it gets Tyreek Stevenson to go ahead and rotate towards the middle of the field. We're going to pay attention to him later. 
Now you're going to see the blocking scheme start to manifest for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. You have a double team at the point of attack, another double team at the point of attack. They're kicking out here, and this arc block is responsible for coming across the formation and picking up your defensive end, which is fine. That means the entire second level right now is unaccounted for. They haven't reached and got up to the second level just yet. So here's your gaps. One gap, two gap, three gap. That's your responsibility. Even right here, as the ball goes into the belly of the running back, one gap, two gap, three gap. Now, inexplicably, right there, middle linebacker decides to lose his gap integrity and remember what I said, pay attention to Tyreek Stevenson, because on the rotation, they're perfectly in prime position to fill that gap. When you left this gap vacant, there's your bubble. They found it. You lost your gap integrity, and that led to the touchdown. This 24 kid should uh, teach tackling. Ready? Pretty textbook to me. So third and 15, University of Miami are going to faint pressure. They're only going to bring three, and they're going to have a quarterback spy. And I know the Matrix 4 Reloaded is about to come out, but safety Avante Williams says, Neo, hold my bag. I was like, the Matrix? A lot of moving parts on this run play by the Georgia Tech offense. Very creative. They're running a quarterback zone read element. However, they're going to go readjust to the counter. Quarterback Jeff Sims is going to go ahead and put the ball at the mesh point he's reading. Once he sees that this defensive end is pushed out, that's going to allow him to come back on this counter. Now, University of Miami linebacker play has been questioned all year, and it's plays like this that lend the credence. Right here, offensive lineman. Can you win that battle there? Not necessarily. And then back here on the backside, can you scrape over, potentially make a play? That linebacker gets knocked down. That linebacker is going to get handled by his pulling lineman, and this gets up to the third level for a successful play by the Georgia Tech running the game. The University of Miami on this third and seven defensively come out facing Georgia Tech in an ace gun two-by-two two look. And it would behoove the University of Miami on certain downs and distances to start trying to influence the quarterback sight picture perception even more. And I'll explain that, but first, let's pay attention to the field side coverage responsibility, shall we? Here you have Cam Kinchins, and he was asked to go ahead and patrol the middle of the field. You're now leaving the number one and number two DBs field side, respectively, to delegate. And the call that was employed, a lot of teams refer to this as a China call, one in which the number one DB is going to play over the top while the number two DB is aggressively going to play curl to flat. Now, why would you employ that call? Well, on the inverse, the University of Miami runs a lot of smash concepts, right? The number two wide receiver runs a corner. The number one wide receiver stays short. This is a great trap call, especially if you're anticipating a corner because it's going to come right into that number one cornerback. But that's not what happens here. And I want to go ahead and start influencing the quarterback's perception and sight picture. Because at the snap of the ball, read the shoulders. We're learning about subtle shoulder warfare. Right here, quarterback propensity to lock in on wide receivers. He has his shoulders into the field side from the jump. Now, when you have this off-man coverage, when you have a safety over the top, and you're even having a defensive tackle who can bracket this number two wide receiver, can you go ahead and imagine if you had the DB on the outside shoulder versus the inside shoulder? Because right here, this would be a better influence to go ahead and take away this route, understanding what's around you. Instead, this is too easy pitch and catch for me. Third and seven, simple stop at the top of the screen, went for a first down. And oh, by the way, this drive, well, it would later score. I really like the concept here by offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley on this third and 11. And I know it goes short of the sticks, but it's a nice twist off that traditional mesh concept. And what is a mesh concept? Simply when you have a drag coming from one side of the field meeting with a drag coming from the opposite side of the field. Also, what's traditionally attached to mesh concepts is a running back wheel. And that's what we have here as well with Jalen Knighton. Now watch the play transpire. They're selling the mesh. 
but then they just sit. Now you also put this DB in conflict and in a bind when he sees that wheel route. So there's the open wide receiver. I'd consider that high school wide open and just a little short, but nice twist off that mesh concept. Yes, at the end of this play, you're going to see a Tyler Van Dyne, but it was creative play designed by Rhett Lashley that went ahead and aided in this play's success. Why? You're selling the hard orbit motion behind quarterback Tyler Van Dyke, and you're also going to go ahead and pull left guard Navon Donaldson on a pass play. Now, people ask, why do you pull offensive linemen on pass plays? Exhibit A. Pay attention to the free safety number one over the top. Oh, that one little hard step in when he read the pulling lineman in orbit motion was all Tyler Van Dyke and Charleston Rambo needed. Because you want to guess what number this guy was? You know, as a former quarterback, if this play happened to me in the game, it's immediately going to get me to inventory it. I'm going to come on the sideline and talk with my offensive coordinator. Because three-by-one looks, second and goal, very common route practice down here to go ahead and run a one-dig, two-dig, three-corner route combo, and Georgia Tech knew it. So right here at the apex of his drop, I want you to see exactly what Tyler sees, right? Right here, okay? There's the dig, there's the dig, there's the corner route. Now, this decision, I'm not necessarily disagreeing it with Tyler. Yes, there's a small tell that the number two DB is opening up his hips, but this is covered perfectly. So when I go ahead and throw this ball, that number two DB was in prime position for an interception. You got to credit Xavier Restrepo there for going ahead and playing great defense versus offense there. But yes, I see that kind of a perfect play call coverage down against me. I'm going to take inventory of it. Now, I know this is a brilliant throw and even better contested catch by Will Mallory at the end of this, but I want to go ahead and commend the offensive line for a perfect protection line call on this. Film review, it's starting to pay off. Because not pictured currently, but you're having a DB blitzing from the field side. So, they're in prime position because watch how they pick this up. Right guard, center, left guard, left tackle, and now Zion Nelson is in perfect prime position to go ahead and wall off this DB coming from the field. Jalen Knighton stole in the block if necessary, and then he's going to be the check down. I like it. And there it is. The ability for Zion to go ahead and pick this up created a perfect pocket for Tyler Van Dyke to go ahead and rip this down the middle of the field for a first down. Great throw and catch, but that all started up front with the offensive line. I'm 100,000% not a kicking guy. This just looks like a glitch to me. He's here, right? Whoop. <laughs> and then he's over there. Doink. This was a busted coverage actually from the linebacker position. When they go ahead and send this running back out here to the field side, he's now the three. The blitz is coming from here, so coverage responsibilities like this. You have the two on the two, not pictured the one on the one cornerback. The Mike linebacker is the one that has to go ahead and run with the motion guy. That's not what happens here. If you run early, maybe you can break this down. Not enough foot speed to get there. Missed angle, missed tackle by the safety, and this is going to score for six. I was sitting in the seats right here, uh, so I'll add some other commentary. It was definitely the Mike linebacker that the coaching staff was talking to after this play was done. And on this last clip of the night, the University of Miami Hurricanes are going to score this touchdown on a post-snap RPO slant. But there's an interesting game of chicken that occurs here between this Georgia Tech defender and Tyler Van Dyke. At the snap of the ball, the ball's going to go right into the belly of the beast, Jalen Knighton. We call this the mesh point. However, this defender, well, he's not moving. He doesn't take the bait. He's aggressively playing this slant window. But you know what? Tyler Van Dyke, arm confidence, he doesn't care. Great play by Keyshawn to go ahead, bully body his way into the end zone, and bang. Once again, thank you to Canesware, proud supporter of X's and Row and student of the game. Stay safe, my friends.